Today I'm going to be showing you on how you can get started with aerodynamic forces inside of Roblox Studio. So this is Roblox's first step in their vision for fluid dynamics, which is the new fundamental system integrated into the Roblox physics engine. So before we get started, here's a couple of few things to note. The aerodynamics force model included in this studio only beta is still experimental and subject to change until the final release. When the force model is updated, it could cause slight differences in the way your creations react to the forces and you might need to retune your experiences. While we may expand the API later in the beta, we expect the current API elements to be final to any scripts that should not require tweaking. Aerodynamics currently run locally in studio, so edit, play and test on a local server. However, it cannot be used in production experiences during the studio beta. We plan to have an open beta soon that will allow you to publish experiences. Finally, it's time to get started. So first of all, you're going to have to enable this beta feature. So head over to File, then click on Beta Features, and now let's make this nice and big. And all we need to do is click on the check mark next to Aerodynamics and click Save. Then let's restart Roblox Studio. Okay, so now we're inside, let's head into a game of our choice, and we're going to head into a base plate here, and here we are, all loaded up, that's looking great. And let's just make this full screen. And this is now going to have everything enabled. So first we need to enable fluid forces, which is inside of the workspace enum. So if we head over to Explorer, then to workspace, and then let's have a look for fluid forces. And then let's change this to experimental. And it's important to know that all parts will start experiencing aerodynamic drag and lift when they move, and parts will also respond to any global wind, and I do have a video on that which will pop up right now, specified by the workspace.globalwind vector free property, and that's looking all good. So now it's time to enable fluid forces on parts. So let's just get a part here, and then let's make this big for example, and let's scale it up, whoosh, and then drag it up a little bit, okay. And now here we go, you need to look for the um, behavior and there should be enable fluid forces and make sure that's enabled. Also, if you're in the studio beta, you may need to toggle the property off and on again for the pre-existing mesh, mesh, for the pre-existing mesh parts and part operations, uh, for example, unions. And then there is a post for known issues on the dev form if you want to look that up. And now there's a couple of things we can change here. So if we run this right now, so we're just going to do F8 for run, and you're going to see it's going to fall down like that. So aerodynamic, okay, so aerodynamic forces scale with the local air density, okay? So this property represents the air density at Y0, and its default correspondence to realistic sea level air density at standard temperature and pressure. Remember, the air density property is expressed in RMU stud um, cubed, and you can follow a handy units conversion guide, which I'll link down below to convert between the real world and Roblox units. And the aerodynamics model also includes a decay of air density with altitude, similar to the real world. So that so the decay is tuned so that the local air density is 5% of the workspace air density and altitude of 100,000 cells or 28,000 meters. Below Y0, we assume a constant density value of workspace air density. So let's say we head over to the workspace and we have a look for air density. Okay, here it is. And let's say we start turning this up again. So let's just put this on 10, for example. And now let's have a look at this. So in the real world, wind generally transitions from a low speed near the ground, where the surface slows the wind down to a higher speed at several hundreds to thousands of meters. The average velocity through this transition or boundary layer looks something like the following diagrams, which are now gonna appear on screen. To balance simplicity with realism, the Roblox aerodynamic system has a wind profile that automatically scales the horizontal x to z wind speed relative to altitude. We choose a profile that is fairly realistic for a wide variety of conditions, with the top of the transition layer at 1000 studs or 280 meters. If you have already started playing around with the global wind property to get realistic looking grass, cloud and particle visuals, you may have noticed that the clouds move at different speeds from the grass. Our aerodynamic the aerodynamic wind profile matches this behavior. 
With the release, when you set workspace.globalwind, the system interprets that as the required wind speed at common avatar's head height, for example 5 studs, the default wind profile automatically scales the wind according to the realistic profile such that at y equals 0, the wind speed is around 10% of the global wind property at y equals 1000. The wind speed is 3x the global wind property. So now that we have turned up the air density, let's see what this part would do. And you're going to see, look at that, it falls so much slower. And that is absolutely amazing if you're looking at air density. And then, for example, we can also change the grass. So like I explained earlier, let's make this grass. And then there should be the wind, yep, wind direction. And we can, of course, change this. And you're going to see that the, um, oops, I accidentally turned that grass, that the air density is going to be affected by this wind and that is going to behave differently. So now when we run it, okay, there should be a little bit of push. I'm noticing my wind isn't getting affected. Ah, didn't save, of course. Uh, how do I save this? I can't remember. Run, is that it? Yep, and now you can see, look at that. The wind blows it, and the higher we are, the faster the wind effect will be. So it may actually behave differently, but I explained that earlier. And look at that, we're going to keep going. Almost touchdown, and I think that is such a cool feature to have. In my opinion, that is sick. And look at us go. Let's add a bit of rotation onto it, for example, like this. You can see it behaves so realistically, and I think that is great for Roblox. So I think that's going to be everything in today's video. If you have any questions, join our Discord. If you have any suggestions, also join our Discord. I'd be happy to answer any questions you may have. And that should be everything. Okay, so thank you for tuning in. That's all from me, and bye-bye.